All you're going to need for this video is a working PSP and a memory card along with a computer and you're going to be able to get your retro arch emulators running along with your PS1 games. So let's get started. So in the video description there's a link to a text file download which is a quick disclaimer and at the very end of the disclaimer there's a, another link to a download which is the pack of all the tools assembled to modify your PSP along with some homebrew apps. So download that link. It's only a few hundred megabytes so it shouldn't take you too long. Now you're going to have to click through the pop-ups. But for me it only took a couple minutes. I'm going to open it up and then we're going to extract that to our desktop. So I'm just going to drag and drop. You don't need to open up that text file anymore. And again, this should only take a few seconds. Once that's finished, we're going to jump to our PSP and plug in our memory card. Now I only have a one gigabyte memory card, but that's okay. So we're just going to pop that in and we'll boot up our PSP. And we're going to double check our system firmware. I think this is on 6.60. Now it's safe to update to the latest version, which is what this tutorial is set up for. So yep. Now even if you're on 6.1, we're still going to update, which we're going to need to plug in our PSP to our computer, which you do that by USB, which is a fairly easy process as you can see here. And your PSP should just automatically jump to this screen. Once that's done, jump back to our PC. Now we're going to navigate to our PSP, which is going to show up as a USB drive, as you can see on my computer. And we're going to open up our downloaded files select the bottom three folders every single one except for the one that says don't copy so again just select the bottom three and we're going to drag and drop that to our PSP this is called the root of the PSP so that should be fairly quick and once that's finished we'll jump back to our PSP and we're going to scroll over to the game column and down to our memory stick and we're going to launch the 6.20 chrono switch downgrader now this is going to give us a fresh install so even if you're on 6.61 that's why i've included this in the tutorial so do this step as well when you're prompted just press x and it'll jump you right over to the update process for the psp now, this is fairly easy, so I'm going to cut this out, but once that's complete, we're just going to double check our system firmware that it is on 6.61. So we'll go to system settings again, down to system information, and yeah, it's on 6.61. So we'll go back to the game column and the memory stick, and now we're going to be able to install Pro C. And this is the first step to modding our PSP. We're going to watch the Pro update. Now again, this is a fairly easy process. It might take a little long for it to boot, but once it's done, just follow those prompts. I've obviously cut out a bunch of the loading process here, but we're just going to double check that that worked. So we're going to go back to system settings, down to system information, and we should see Pro C. It does, so we're going to jump and plug our PSP into our computer and then we're going to open up File Explorer and navigate to our PSP which again shows up as a USB drive. We'll open up the PSP folder and then we're going to open up the game folder and we're going to copy over or drag and drop the eBoot file into the update folder. We're going to over, overwrite the file that's already in there and then we're going to jump back to our PSP. 
So now that we're at our PSP, we're going to scroll over to the game column again and down to our memory stick. And now you'll see this infinity symbol. We're going to launch that. Now it doesn't work on my output display, so I'm going to use my camera to catch this. So again, we're going to go over to the memory stick. And, oops, in the game column. So memory stick and the infinity symbol. Now this is the mod that's going to permanently install our Pro-C custom firmware. The Pro-C app lets you run homebrew games and Infinity permanently installs that so you don't have to keep running the app every time you turn on your PSP. So we're going to run it the first time and all you got to do is press X twice when you're prompted to. It's going to reboot and again we're just going to check our system firmware well we don't really need to so we're just going to launch infinity 2 again now this time it's going to be a different screen and we're going to scroll to the left to the left and we've got the Pro C custom firmware, so we're going to select that. And then we'll go back to the middle, and then press the home button and X, and you're going to get back to the main screen. Once that boots up like that, now we'll check our firmware. Now I'll be surprised if it says Pro C and Infinity, but it should show Infinity symbol, which is good. So now we just got to power off and on our PSP. Now you got to do a full power off and a full power on. So you know you've done that when you see the Sony symbol pop up again. So that was a full power off and power on cycle. And now we'll scroll over to our system firmware and it should show Pro C with an infinity symbol. I'll go down to system information and there we go. So our PSP is permanently modded. So now we're going to launch RetroArch just to test things out and it also installs a few files or folders onto our memory card. The PSP is permanently modded and ready to take on some ROMs. So let's jump back to the computer. So obviously we're going to plug in our PSP back into our computer. And once that's done, we're going to open up a file explorer and navigate to our PSP. And I've collected a whole bunch of games that are probably similar to the types that you're going to want to copy over. We're going to start over with the PSP. And PSP games are usually in ISO or CSO format. It doesn't really matter. CSO is just smaller than ISO. So if you have those, you'll be able to fit more games. Now, again, with space, I've included a whole bunch of extras on here. So in the PSP game folder, I, you'll see a folder called extras. Now, all these are just emulators that I've included as extras. Again, so you can just delete those if you're running low on space. If you've got a two gigabyte uh, memory card, this probably won't affect you, but I'm just testing this out for you. So. I'm going to copy over the Final Fantasy 20th Anniversary game just because it's the smallest one. And again, they all go into the ISO folder and that's at the root of the PSP. So we're going to copy that over. Again, that should only take a few minutes. The next thing we're going to cover is RetroArch. Now this has got 
pretty much every single emulator that you need so the extra folder is sort of useless unless you want to use one of those emulators I've included but I'm going to copy over a NES game and for RetroArch I just usually copy it over into the downloads folder which is located in the PSP RetroArch and then downloads folder I just copy it straight over but if you want to be more organized and have folders that contain certain systems you can do that too now the next I'm going to cover is PS1 games now before you can get a PS1 game to work you got to convert it so we're going to open up the downloads that I've included earlier and we're going to extract over the PSX the PSP application once that's complete, we're going to run the application as administrator. Now, I'm just going to copy over this game fairly quickly. We're going to use classic mode. So you can include cover art in the right-hand columns, but I don't have any, so I'm not going to do that. Now, I've already got it located to where I've put the ROMs, but you can see it's just like a normal file browser so just go to where you've got your PS1 games you select the bin apply all the patches and then you convert now I put the output folder as the desktop once you've done that you can just drag and drop the folder that's created into the PSP and then game folder so we pretty much covered all the games you're probably going to copy over so we'll jump back to our PSP and test them out so they're all going to show up in the games column so we're going to scroll over there and you'll start to see in the memory stick that is our grand theft auto now again you're probably going to want to find cover art for it but we're going to launch it up and as you can see it's booting just fine so we the intro screen i'm going to quit out of this because i don't want to get no copyrights Put the game and we'll go back to the memory stick so you can see the PS1 games are working fine. So now we're going to test out the PSP. So it's booting up so far, and there we go. We got the Square Enix booting up, and we got the intro scene running just fine. So we're going to quit this game. So we got the PSP running pretty good here. That automatically comes with cover art, I guess. So we'll go back to the memory stick. And we're going to go down to Retro Arch. So we'll go down to Load Content. And we'll go down to downloads and you can see our game already pops up and it's going to ask us which emulator we want to use anyone's going to really much work for most games if one emulator doesn't work you could always try another one out so I'll jump back now I've also included a whole bunch of themes if you don't like the stock theme so I'll show you if you go over to your settings column and you can see I've included you probably got about 15 different themes to choose from it's just a pack of themes I don't actually use any of these some of them are pretty cool most of them are probably not kid friendly so if you're doing this for your kids double check what themes you have on there or else you might be surprised see what you have to do is apply it which is fairly self-explanatory and you can get your PSP looking pretty cool that's a pretty cool looking theme and maybe I'll try one more out as you can see there's a lot of girl character themes there that might not be kid appropriate this one out so again let's go ahead and 
install. This is looking pretty cool. But uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm hoping that this video has helped you out and you dusted off your PSP. If so, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.